As I said before in my previous thing on goals, flashcards, yours, mine, or t'other guys, are a terrific part of an ongoing and long-term effort. This long-term is a tricky bit. Kids are not good at long-term, and you really can't blame them. I don't care how old you are, you must remember how long it took you to get to some revocation when you were a kid, or how long it took your 16th birthday and your driver's license. So it falls to parents to keep things going for some years and 20 or 30 stacks of 100 things. Does this seem a difficult task? Let me offer what advice I can to make it a little bit easier. First thing to do to make a successful two or more year effort is to make it into a routine or a habit. Absolutely, but this is not really useful advice, is it? A good habit is sort of an end rather than a means to an end. Or to put it differently, the means to the end of developing a habit of learning, which is, in turn, the means to the end of becoming a well-educated individual. Let me offer some means, but don't lose sight of this idea, this end of the habit of learning. Number one, learn it yourself and let your kids see you working and learning it. It's probably going to be a review for you anyway, and if not, knowing 100 things about American history you forgot wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, would it? But there's a lot more to it than this, though. Some years ago, the NTL Institute did some interesting research on learning and how much learning is retained under certain circumstances. Notice that about 5% of what people learn from lecture and about 10% of what they learned from reading is retained. It's still there in the pumpkin a few days later. But when a learner immediately teaches someone else, retention goes up 90%. So, do you spend a little time in the car every day with one or more of your children? Well, have them help you learn, or pretend to anyway. Take five or ten flashcards, depending upon how long the ride and how old your kids, and learn together. Talk about the facts and what they mean. Remember, facts are just the beginning of learning. But they are an important dang part, particularly for young ones. Let me go back to my example of American history. Understanding a little about the American Revolution after they memorize 1776 is a great way to learn if you can flesh out the fact for them. But what if you're not quite up to snuff yourself? This is not a bad thing. Kids love it when they know something grown-ups don't know, provided they've actually learned it somewhere along the line. It may be appropriate to suggest to your child, ask your mother or father, or bone up a little and the next day say something like, Honey, you know how you're asking about the Minutemen yesterday? Well, I found out, blah, blah, blah. This learning about something one day and learning a little more about it or reviewing it the next day is not a bad way to learn things at all. In fact, it ratchets retention up a notch or two. Or for that matter, take a peek at the next day's flashcards and prepare or cheat. Or listening to my accompanying study guides, they are all about making facts easier to learn. One way or the other, the flashcards are in your pocket, aren't they? This also makes you look smart in your kid's eyes. By the way, in teaching, this business of setting a good example is called modeling a desired behavior. This brings me to my next tip, or trick actually, and something that works great with two or more kids, particularly if one of them is getting to the age that holds everyone over 18, is an impossible dork unless they're a rock star. Picture this. You're in your car with two kids, and the younger one is memorizing dates to a fairly well, and the older one is, shall we say, disengaged. The younger one asks a question, perhaps a question of meaning rather than fact, and the older one, who has forgotten the fact but remembers something about the meaning, now has something to say. Maybe something insulting to the younger one to the effect that, you're so dumb, everyone knows that 1776 was because blah, blah, blah. Such is the nature of siblings, and cannot be helped. But in the discussion that follows, learning, and learning with a capital L, will happen for both kids, particularly if mom or dad provide a little refereeing and the occasional clarification. While on the subject of siblings, let me offer step two and a half. Suppose your younger kid is engaged in learning the older one, well, not so much. There may be reasons the younger one is learning better and faster than the older one, and you know your kids better than anyone, but all else being equal, a little comparison, a little gentle parental leverage carefully applied, just has to be some kind of a motivator for the older one. Now we get to the happy point I can set aside sibling rivalry, perhaps naively, and offer a strategy of sibling cooperation. 
This is perhaps even more naive, but if you can make it work, wow, amazing things will happen. What you do is you make one child responsible for the other's learning a given set of facts. Only when both or three or more of your kids have learned the facts does everyone get pizza. Or make one kid responsible for coming up with the meaning for a set of flashcards. Again, to use American history, there are a number of facts, names and dates and places to be memorized about World War I and World War II. But there's also a lot of important subtle meaning. Have pizza night depending upon kid A doing research on the causes of World War I and kid B researching the causes of World War II. Then they have to explain it to one another. And both kids have to end up knowing the stuff. Remember, retention as high as 90% comes after both learning something first and then teaching it. Another way to go about this, particularly if you've got an older kid, is have him do the research and teach the younger one meaning. To paraphrase, both kids memorize the facts, and only then does the older one do a little extra work, being older and all, and gather meaning. Meaning put into his or her own words, and more to the point, meaning and words used to explain it all to the younger sibling. Almost directly following tip number three is movie night. After your kids have passed whatever test you set for them on a given topic, for example, getting through some number of flashcards with the correct answers, you put a movie in the machine. Pull out all the stops and make it an occasion. Make popcorn, serve ice cream, let them stay up later than usual bedtime, but not on a school night. Do whatever you have to to, one, motivate them to memorize the facts, and then, two, find meaning to these facts from the movie, and finally, and perhaps most important, number three, make them enjoy it so much that they tackle the next assignment enthusiastically. How many movies are there on World War II, for example? And some good, entertaining movies that actually get the history pretty much right. By the way, I offer suggestions in this direction in all my study guides. Now, I have to admit that movies that support math in this fashion are a little hard to come by, but there are movies that make science and social studies and literature and the arts interesting. There are even a few that contribute to the craft of writing. My fifth and final suggestion is what I call game night. It's a little advanced. It's perhaps more for families with older kids or more academically inclined kids or maybe homeschooled kids. There are so many ways of playing games with flashcards that I have an entire article on the subject, but let me just offer one possibility. You know that popular game that involves trivia questions? I simply swap the trivia questions for a good-sized stack of my flashcards, and everyone rolls the dice and moves around the board, and then they fill the little game pieces with the little colored pie slices that correspond to the subjects. This is a great way, an easy way, to review what you and the kids have been working on for the last few months. Well, that's it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what works, what doesn't work. Give me suggestions. Ask me questions. And thanks for listening.